All right, so we're gonna review these exponent rules. So your first problem, we have nine to the negative second power divided by nine to the negative sixth power. Anytime that we are dividing and the numbers have the same base, so in this case, they're both nine, and it's a division problem because it's set up as a fraction, we're going to subtract the exponents. So we have nine to the negative two power minus negative six. So kind of a side note, anytime we subtract and we have negative numbers, it's easier to use the additive inverse. So we change, we keep the first number the same, we change subtraction to addition, and we change the sign of the number that followed that subtraction sign. So instead of a negative six, it's going to be a positive six. So these two equations are exactly the same. Negative two minus negative six is the same as negative two plus six. So what we're really gonna do here is nine to the negative two plus six power, which we know is nine to the fourth power. This is very tricky. If you're not sure and you can't remember how to do this part, just plug this into your calculator. You will be allowed to use one on your tests. So just make sure you do negative two minus negative six, and it will get you that positive four. So that's your answer for number one. Number two, we have six to the negative second power times six to the positive fifth power. So the first rule was about dividing with the same base. This rule is about multiplying with the same base. So both have a six. Now we're going to add the exponents together. So negative two plus five. And negative two plus five is gonna give us a positive three. All right, let's go on to the next one. We have a to the third power times b to the sixth power times a to the fourth power times b to the seventh power. So this is very similar to the rule that we did in step in question number two, except we're just gonna combine the like terms. So we have a to the third power times a to the fourth power and b to the sixth power times b to the seventh power. Because it's multiplication, we can multiply in any order. So that goes back to our properties of the commutative property of multiplication. It doesn't really matter if we multiply A times B times A times B, or if we multiply A times A and B times B, we're still going to end up with the same product, the same answer. So we're going to mix these around. And now it looks a little bit more like number two. So we are going to do the three plus four because we're multiplying and it has the same base. So we're gonna add the exponents together. So that becomes seven. And then we're gonna do the B six plus seven because again, the bases are the same and it's a multiplication problem. So we're gonna add the exponents. So our final answer will be A to the seventh, B to the 13th. All right, let's go to number four. We have x to the negative one power divided by x to the negative two power. So the same thing as number one, we have the same base, it's a division problem, so we're going to subtract. So negative one minus negative two, kind of going back up here, we've got negative one minus negative two, we're going to keep the first number the same, change subtraction to addition, and change the second number to its opposite. So that is going to give us a positive one. When in doubt, use your calculator. So x to the first power, which is the same as just a normal x. All right, I'm going to clear this off so we have some room to go on to question number five, which is a long one. We have 27 a to the fourth power, b to the fifth power, c to the eighth power, divided by three, a to the second power, b, c to the fifth power. When there is no number in the exponent value, it is a one. 
So it is b to the first power, but they didn't write that. It's one of those rules we need to know. It's there, we just don't always write it. We never actually usually write it. So we're going to break this up into four different division problems. We're not really gonna have to do this every time, but just so you can see it, I'm gonna write it out. We've got 27 divided by three, a to the fourth divided by a to the second, b to the fifth divided by b to the first, and c to the eighth divided by c to the fifth. And now we can simplify each one. 27 divided by three, that gives us nine. A to the fourth divided by A to the second. They have the same base. We're going to subtract the exponents. Four minus two is two. B to the fifth divided by B to the first, same base. We're gonna subtract the exponents. Five minus one is four. And then C to the eighth divided by C to the fifth, same base, subtract the exponents. Eight minus five is three. So it looked like a long, complicated problem, but once we separated it out, we saw that it really was just four separate, simpler problems. Let's go to number six. X to the second power times X to the negative ninth power. So we're just going to add the exponents because it is a multiplication problem and the same base. So the base stays the, stays the same. 2 plus negative 9 x to the negative 7th power. Now, this is a problem because we don't like negative exponents for our answers. So the negative exponent rule says that we can change this problem by flipping it upside down. So right now, this is like x over 1. We're going to do one over X, and then it can become a positive seven in the denominator. So just a side note, if we had a negative number in the denominator already, we would flip it and it would become positive and we don't need to put it over one, we could just do Y to the third power. So wherever the negative is, whether it's in the numerator or whether it's in the denominator, we're going to flip it so it's in the opposite spot and then the sign can go away. We don't like negative exponents we, for our final answer. We've got to make sure that those are gone and we do that by flipping it and using the reciprocal. And your last question. We have A, to the third power, b to the second power, all raised to the fifth power, times two times a to the fourth power, b, whoops, a to the fourth power times b, all raised to the third power. So we wanna make sure that that exponent outside gets distributed to every exponent inside. And that exponent is gonna be multiplied to those exponents. So before, if we were multiplying and the bases were the same, we added the exponents. But this isn't a multiplication problem. This is an exponent being raised to another exponent. So it's like an exponent on top of an exponent. And that rule says you have to take the outside exponent and multiply it by all the exponents inside the parentheses. So we're going to have a to the 15th power because three times five is 15 and b to the 10th power. Now it gets a little tricky over here. Let me just make that cleaner because we're gonna do three times Remember what that exponent is for the B? It's a one. So three times one, three times four. And guess what? The two has an exponent also of one. So it's going to be one times three again. So all of those are getting multiplied. So two to the third power now, because one times three is three, A to the 12th power and B to the third power. So all of those will get multiplied together. And then we can simplify two to the third power and 
and that's going to be eight. Now on your paper, it stopped here, but we could go another step further and we can combine those like terms again, like we did on question number three. So we have eight is kind of by itself, doesn't have any like terms, but we have a to the 15th power times a to the 12th power. And we have b to the 10th power times b to the third power. So we could do eight a to the 27th power and b to the 13th power. All right, let me know if you have any questions.